screw the spy balloons. We'll just buy up the land right next to the base and we'll just build these giant wind turbines and we'll just install whatever the hell we want at the top and we'll have access to all of that. We can see everything that they do. And oh, by the way, Americans are so stupid, they're just gonna let us do it. All right, welcome to Come and Take It. Uh, those of you who watch this podcast uh, or listen to this podcast, I should say, probably know this is powered by Texas Scorecard. It is an organization that I am very proud to partner with in order to save Texas. And when we talk about saving Texas, there is surprisingly a lot of work to be done. Um, for instance, I'm hoping that this changes this session, but Democrats up until at least the last session, Democrats are still allowed to run things by being assigned uh, key committee chairs. What? You've got to be kidding me. Okay. Why would we do that? I don't know. Dade Phelan might not be all too bright up here. Okay. Um, there's still pornographic literature in schools, which I would say is kind of a big deal. We need to stop that. There are still... Um, Drag shows, all ages drag shows that I'm going into that you guys, I mean, if you watch this program or listen to this program, you realize that is still going on in Texas. We should probably also stop that. Um, public schools, speaking of schools, uh, not only is there graphic literature available to school age children in our schools, uh, public schools are just in complete disarray and we don't even have school choice. Again, hoping that these problems are solved next session with the fresh blood coming in. Uh, but we still don't have meaningful property tax reform, which would be elimination of property taxes. That's, I, I, look, if you want to give me a little bit of a break, okay, but um, let's not pat ourselves on the back too hard. Meaningful property tax reform would be elimination of property taxes. If I own my home, I should not have to keep paying for my home. That's not how the system should work. Uh, we still don't have border security. I mean, there are things in this state, that we have a lot of work that still remains to be done um, on all of these issues. But one issue that I don't think is talked about enough that threatens our security, not just of the state, but of our nation, is our increasing reliance on completely unreliable energy, as it turns out. I know they call, they say, um, uh, it's well, it's renewable energy. That's what they call it. It's green energy. It's renewable energy. Wind and solar power. Doesn't that sound so nice? It gives you warm and fuzzy feelings inside because we're doing something for the environment. So you may recall, if you live here in the great state of Texas, uh, several years ago, during the winter of 2021, we had the great Texas freeze and everything shut down. Uh, it was like subarctic temperatures. It was wild. I have lived here my whole life and I I've never seen anything like it. Um, eventually, more than 4.5 million homes and businesses were without power. People died. It was a, re I mean, it was incredible, like, and not in a good way. It was just an incredible giant mess. And it really exposed um, the failures in our energy in our electric grid. Um, and so according to UT's Energy Institute, actually, it caused over $195 billion in property damage. I would say that's a lot of money, $195 billion. So you think to yourself, how could that happen in the state of Texas? I mean, we pride ourselves that like, if there were ever to be a real Texit, we've got our own grid. We could... We could do it. We could really do it. Well, I mean, are you? do you feel confident in our grid knowing what happened back in 2021? So then you think, how could this happen in the state of Texas? How could it happen in a place that is so oil rich, right? We have an ever increasing reliance on wind power, on solar power. And it turns out when it gets really freaking cold, you can't rely on a windmill because it freezes. That's that's how that turns out, which like, duh. So Texas Scorecard uh, did some digging into this energy issue. And I would say that 
what they found um, got even more terrifying than just unreliable energy grids. Watch. We didn't run out of energy. We're just running out of freedom. Four minutes and 37 seconds. That's how close Texas was from a total power grid collapse. It is a national security issue. It is probably one of our most important assets. A Chinese general still plugs directly into ERCOT to this very day. I think that's a bad idea. I think that's a risk. It's easy to think the biggest threats to Texas's electric grid are a winter storm or an extended heat wave. Texas isn't as strong as Texans like to say it is. And that's, that's unfortunate. And yes, those might be the proximate causes of the grid's collapse. But February freezes and August heat are nothing new. What's new is the weakness that's been purpose built into the state's power grid. It's a weakness we've been conditioned to accept as the new normal. How did Texas end up in this position? All of this is about control. More than half of Texas voters now think the grid is unreliable. They're actually expecting it to fail. And they're right to be concerned. You cannot build enough battery backup for them. It's impossible. I wish the consumer would dictate what they want because I think consumers would choose reliable power sources instead of what we have. On top of that, we're choosing inferior energy that is sourced from arguably our greatest geopolitical threat. We're actually going backwards in America with reliability. Who thinks that's a good idea? I bet China thinks it's a good idea. Everybody needs to start connecting the dots. Tear Texas down because you bring Texas down and the rest of the nation goes with it. So there are two issues that are at, well, I should say there are a lot of issues at play. There are two main issues, um, in my opinion, after watching this documentary at play. So number one issue is obviously the unreliability of what they call green energy. Um, solar is unreliable by nature because it relies on the sun, which is not always out. That should be a given. Uh, wind is also unreliable. As I mentioned earlier, um, there can be inherent problems with the windmills when it's either not windy or really freaking cold and the windmills freeze up and don't run. Okay. So the unreliability of this green energy that they call it, um, we could be talking about nuclear. If, if, if someone, if the left wants to have a meaningful conversation about how we get away from oil and gas, which I'm not, I'm not a big fan of. I mean, I'm a big fan of oil and gas. I'm not a big fan of going, getting away from oil and gas, but you could at least listen to them. You could at least know that they had done their homework, that they really understood what they were talking about if they wanted to talk about nuclear energy, but they only want this green energy, which they say is renewable, um, as if you don't have to invest more into it after you make the initial investment. Uh, that's not true. And on top of that, the whole idea, one of the big cells is that it's supposed to be environmentally friendly, right? We're doing this for the environment. We're doing this for the earth. The green energy is the way to go. They're telling you that we, like, f you are sacrificing well, they don't want to call it sacrificing, but like the trade-off is that they're saying, we need green energy. You're going to sacrifice a little bit um, here and there. You might sacrifice a little bit of reliability. You might sacrifice, um, you know, cost savings, but we're saving the environment. And that's really what we should focus on. That is one of the biggest scams of all time. Green energy I want to, those of you who are listening on podcasts, you can't see this. I'm trying to remember to give air quotes every time I say green energy, because it's just, just that saying alone is such a scam. It causes all sorts of problems in the environment because what happens to the giant windmill parts whenever they're, um, they've retired or they break off? What happens to those parts? You think you're just going to like go to a, a dumpster? and just dump a big old giant windmill part into the recycle dumpster and the recycle truck's gonna come pick it up. 
Yeah, it the let me tell you, oh, I mean, watch, watch the documentary. You'll see what happens to the windmill parts, okay? But uh, it's not environmentally friendly, what they're doing. Um, what about the solar panels? Let's say there is a giant natural disaster. What do you think happens during a giant natural disaster when those solar panels break? Where do you think those shards go? What do you think would happen if they flew into the ocean? Or they flew into, you know, I mean... Hell, anywhere, your backyard, a walking trail, whatever. What do you think happens to those, right? Does that sound environmentally friendly to you? I mean, that should be obvious. These are not environmentally friendly uh, types of energy. So they're telling you, you're making the trade. You're trading out something more reliable, but at least it saves the environment. It's not true. Oh, and by the way, um, you're going to spend more because all of this costs more to actually do. So you're going to spend more in the form of subsidies to even keep these programs afloat. Does that sound at all like a reasonable decision for the government to make? Yeah, sounds a little suspicious. It's all a crock. It's all a sham. But here's the second piece of the documentary that it gets into not only is what all of the above, what I've just said, factoring that, okay, not only the unreliability and the fact that like the, the trade-off that you're supposed to be making is not even there, it's a giant scam. Um, we are investing in that unreliable energy by buying the parts from China for our wind turbines and for our solar panels. Again, does that sound like a good idea to you? It's as if we we've learned nothing from COVID. And... By the way, I could go off for probably hours on how it's a dumb idea to get all of our medication, life-saving medications uh, from China. We probably shouldn't be letting one of our enemies produce the medication that we take to save people's lives here in this country. Um, also, like when China shuts down, turns out our uh, supply chains are affected and we can't get medication. So you would think that we would have learned from COVID. Hey, there are certain things that it's a really bad idea to rely on China for. One of them, probably our energy. <laughs> Put me in government. It seems like I have the answers to all of these problems that these dopes can't seem to understand. But so we're padding China's pocketbook. We're padding the CCP's pocketbook. And I, I shouldn't, I feel like anytime I say the CCP, I should remind everyone what that stands for because we just say CCP and gloss over it, the Chinese Communist Party, okay? We're padding the CCP's pocketbook while they over there in China, they're selling us the parts and that's fine. But do you know what they're investing in? They're investing in coal and nuclear plants because they know that that's what works, because they know that that is what is the most reliable and, as it turns out, what is the most cost-effective. So they're creating that for themselves, but they are happy to send us wind turbine parts and solar panels. They are happy to be making money from us. How dumb do we look? We're sitting here on all of this oil, and what do we do? Instead of drilling for it, we're paying our enemy for unreliable parts. That is a terrible idea. For unreliable, and like, that is so dumb. They have to be laughing at how stupid that is that we're doing it. And like, they're not even, we're not even blinking. We're not even thinking twice about it. Well, I mean, I am, you probably are. But the dummies in government don't even understand how stupid that is. We're sitting on the materials right now. And instead of utilizing that, that's what we're doing. But not only is all of that true, we're also setting the stage for a Chinese Communist Party takeover here in this state, here in this country. And you may think that that sounds um, exaggerated. You may think that that sounds embellished. No, it's not. Why, you ask? Because here in Texas, under Dade Phelan's leadership, we still, to this day, have not banned the CCP, the Chinese Communist Party, from owning land in the state. I mean, that is bonkers crazy to me. It is a known fact that the Chinese Communist Party, China, the Chinese are coming in and they are buying up a crap ton of land in this country. In fact, a bill to ban 
the CCP from owning Texas land was passed out of the Texas Senate. Good job, Texas Senate. But under Dade Phelan's leadership, it never made it to the floor of the Texas House. You got to wonder why. Seems like a no-brainer, right? You got to wonder why. What's in it for Dade Phelan? Maybe someone should take a look at his bank account. But so we still don't have that bill. How is the CCP taking advantage of that? Well, CCP generals have been buying up farmland, uh, wind farms, et cetera, buying up a whole bunch of land. Oh, but that, it's not just that. They also happen to be, in some instances, right next to really important military bases. A Chinese Red Army general bought land adjacent to Laughlin Air Force Base, a key training facility located east of Del Rio. He immediately began putting wind turbines on the land closest to the air base. Typical windmills are in the 300 foot, 340 foot range. The new applications from the Chinese general where they wanted to build 700 foot tall windmills. Imagine a windmill that tall. And the higher it is, the more horizon it can map, right? And now over the horizon mapping can be accurate within one square inch. Well, that's important, right? We shouldn't allow those kinds of things. These are like National Security 101. That's our number one Air Force training base there. We do things there that are both unclassified and classified. It's a very important base for us. Don't worry, nothing to see here. I'm sure it's just a total coincidence that China wants to erect much higher wind turbines uh, than we have, okay? Much higher wind turbines and they have as it turns out, at the tippy top, a much greater view of all of these, you know, or at least this one, key military base. I'm sure that that is just a coincidence. These key military bases that are engaging in all of these classified uh, acts, training all of these uh, military service members, doing all sorts of things that they probably don't want China to know, they thought to themselves, you know what? Screw the spy balloons. <laughs> we'll just buy up the land right next to the base and we'll just build these giant wind turbines and we'll just install whatever the hell we want at the top and we'll have access to all of that. We can see everything that they do. And oh, by the way, Americans are so stupid, they're just gonna let us do it. It took them forever to shoot the stupid spy balloon out of the sky. They don't care. We'll just buy up the land. They won't even know what's going on. So we're giving them money. We're buying their goods so that they can buy food, so that they can uh, control our energy grid, okay? So that they can invest in what they want to invest in, which seem to be much smarter investments than we're making, while we're making ourselves less secure at the hands of the Chinese Communist Party. Party. Sounds pretty stupid when you think about it, doesn't it? <laughs> I mean, you you watch this documentary and you do a, a, an ounce of research and you're like, uh, this really seems like a no-brainer that it really makes you wonder who in the world we're putting in charge of making these decisions because how stupid can you be to make such a, like, what, 20 decisions one after the other that just don't seem to be thought out whatsoever. Now, there is a solution. And I'll tell you this, it's local. So you're going to have to get active. But I would say the first step to understanding that is to watch the new documentary by Texas Scorecard, Red Power. Um, I I'm, I'm telling you, screw the spy balloons. <laughs> we'll just buy up the land right next to the base and we'll just build these giant wind turbines and we'll just install whatever the hell we want at the top and we'll have access to all of that. We can see everything that they do. And oh, by the way, Americans are so stupid, they're just gonna let us do it state, and honestly, this entire country has been asleep at the wheel in this regard while our enemies have been thoughtfully and carefully planning each move and always seemingly uh, tend to be 20 steps ahead of us. This is no different. So go check it out. It's texasscorecard.com slash red power, texasscorecard.com slash red power. Um, and they're going to give you not only the problem, but they're also going to give you the solution. It is local. 
go check it out. Let me know what you think in the comments. And if you have not yet subscribed on either the audio podcast, if you're listening to this on YouTube, you're watching this on YouTube, go subscribe to the audio podcast, okay? Apple Podcasts and Spotify. If you are watching, no, if you are listening to this on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, um, make sure you go over to YouTube. Uh, it's youtube.com slash at Sarah Gonzalez Unfiltered. And uh, you can make sure not to miss a moment. We will see you next time on Come and Take It. Oh, uh-huh.